Bullshit. It's the No BS Marketing Show. I'm your host, Dave Mastovich. Our guest today is the CEO of NGE Environmental, Amy Veltri. Amy, in the first half of the show, you walked us through your career background with uh, being the only female engineering student in your undergraduate and graduate class with your master's at West Virginia University. You talked about being at your first job for 10 years, and you gave a great example of a learning experience where uh, the person had talked about something you weren't quite up to snuff with and how you went to school in the evenings to get better at that. And then you talked about how at age 35, you thought it was the perfect time to start your business because you felt you had enough experience to have credibility, but you still were at the prime of the energy years to get it started and and just that perfect year. So as we go into more in-depth of the conversation, I want to talk to you a little bit about marketing, specifically no BS marketing, which is all about clearly defining your target audiences, finding out what they want, developing it if you don't already have it giving it to them when and where they want it at a price they're willing to pay, and then telling them about it again and again. Now, unfortunately, most people get hung up on that last part, the telling. But you need to start with clearly defining those target audiences and then do the necessary marketing intel to ask them what they want. You won't always hear what you think you're going to hear, and you and I have experienced that together on a couple Mm -hmm. projects. So then you have to tweak your product so you can give it to them when and where they want it, at a price they're willing to pay and tell them about it again and again. Then telling about it can be the fun part. So think back to your most amazing moment in your experience with marketing, messaging, or communications. What's your biggest marketing success? So I would say as a smaller services business with a very focused market. So we're not looking to go out and do marketing to the public. We're not selling some type of commodity that the public is interested in. We're selling a very high-end based service. So marketing for us is not what marketing is like for craft foods. or So, so that's been something I'm, I'm still learning about. And I'm learning a lot about the differences between business development and marketing from having exposure to Dave Mastovich, for Woo-hoo. sure. He's taught me much about that through our Vistage group. Well, thank and you. Yeah. Um, so I don't necessarily have a big marketing success. I will say that we've tried various things. So we've tried some email messaging, we've tried some direct mail stuff. And I'm I'm still not sure. I I think truthfully, what works best for us from a marketing standpoint is continuing on our course, continuing to do good, consistent work for our existing clients and making sure that that word of mouth gets passed on. That's by far been our most important thing. And it has worked for us. But one of the most interesting things um, from a success standpoint recently has been, we, so we have decided to undertake a little bit more formal marketing efforts, and, and we've done that with Mass Solutions, which um, they've done a fantastic job for us. And one of the, the more interesting things that we've learned is we've, we've done a marketing intel piece with them and had them reach out to our existing clients, our past clients, our wish list clients. And understanding their perspective on us and what they think about us has been very insightful from a standpoint of how we adjust our services or how we adjust, you know, what they understand about us. That So that's probably been our most insightful and successful piece. Well, one of the things that we learned from that is the amazing brand that both you and your brother have in the marketplace. And it was interesting because you were working out of separate offices. You've unified it much more now with the way your structure is and so forth. But the clients that have worked with your brother would talk to him about talk about him by name, talk about how great he was. Your clients would talk about you. So there's a tremendous brand for both of you and then your support staff. So I think that's something great to start from yeah. and build from. And that goes to what you were saying. I think you've built it through word of mouth because you have a very specialized service that's highly professional, highly technical, highly expertise oriented. And for the two of you to have that brand, it is just speaks a lot to your your whole family history. Right. Your dad so it goes it back too. to right. So it like as I said, I mean, I think it goes back to the way you were raised and and what you're about and why that's so important. So I mean, not to get too deep at this point, but I think the most important thing we do in life. So we all we all work, we all have families, we all but the most important thing to me at this point to you think about everything that matters and the way you raise your kids and what you instill in them 
and the values that are important. Like that's, that's really the main thing that matters in life. So what you do as a professional is, is great, but that doesn't leave your mark on life. The most important thing you do is, is what you instill in your children. And that's what my parents instilled in me. And that's why I'm where I am today. So, so when it comes to messaging, Amy, you've heard me say it, uh, you've, uh, we talk a lot about it with your company, but we've talked about it at Vistage. We are in the same Vistage group. When it comes to messaging, we have to understand both our why, which is our reason for being, and you've talked a lot about that today, and then our customers' why, their reason for buying. So we then crystallize that into one big idea or theme that makes an emotional impact on our target audiences. So let's talk about that for NGE, or even you personally. What's your big idea? So that's something we've spent some time on relatively recently. So I'm, I'll talk about it more on a professional standpoint. Personally, I don't know what my why is. but <laughs> Well, I think I just talked about you that. Did. So. You did. Yeah. You did. You gave a <laughs> so, great one. Don't set yeah. yourself short. And I have two daughters, great, great two, yeah, an 18-year-old and 15-year-old daughter. So I think them seeing me be successful as a career mother is very, very important. And, and I'm very proud of them. And speaking of graduates, I have one that's graduating in two weeks. So... Again, Congratulations. Very, yeah, very, very important um, to see them be successful and, and happy, well-adjusted girls. So, um, But with regards to the professional side, um, we've given some thought to that lately. And we, we came up with a really kind of a neat tagline. So it's improving and protecting the environment and our nation's infrastructure through the application of science. So basically what we're saying there is... What our purpose is, is to, again, improve the environment through ensuring that our clients are complying with environmental regulations, improving the nation's infrastructure through the application of our geotechnical engineering. Um, and, and again, that's implying our technical knowledge, the science that we, we've we learned in school to doing that. So that's really been our purpose and our tagline. And you've so. kind of made it, that's a, a core message for your mission statement? For sure. Is it kind yeah. of your mission and vision yep. and values? It is. Yep. Excellent. So, so all our staff are aware of that. We talk about that through our quarterly meetings and, and how we're living that and how we're really, you know, doing that in our everyday life. So. Well, let's move on to a tool or tip oh. that you'd offer that'll help our audience when they come to telling their story. And that could be either internal or external or when they craft their message or just how people communicate. So it could be something about leadership that you've used to help lead at NGE or to help communicate with your team at NGE, or it could be something you use as a CEO that's hugely busy balancing the family, balancing running a company. It could be any kind of tip like that, something you think would help our audience. So several things come to mind. So one, as a working mom, certainly try to Give your all to whatever it is you're doing at the moment. So if you're at home with your family, try to quiet work and pay attention to your children and, and give your all to them. If you're at work, try to quiet the personal stuff and give your all there. It's very difficult to do, I will say, because there's always a million things going on in your mind. Um, a, a second is, of course, hire mass solutions to do your marketing because they're fantastic and they have certainly helped us understand marketing and talent. Sponsorship message. This episode. <laughs> so when you have a fireball, we know that that's better than tequila. We didn't get any endorsements with tequila. Gosh, <laughs> See, it's <that's> awesome. <laughs> and then, um, last but not least, just be true to yourself. I mean, do do the best thing. Be honest, communicate with your clients, with your staff, um, and I think you'll be successful. You just, even if it's bad news, make sure you're communicating it and make sure you're being honest and being true to who you are. It's just the simple stuff. People ask me lots of times why, why I feel like I've been successful and what the secret is, and, and, and I feel like there's no secret. It's just being being who you are and being honest not you know communicating with people and telling the truth and um just always making the right decisions and you know what it is it's it's not difficult it's not rocket science so i will tell you that from an authenticity standpoint listeners uh, amy veltry is as in uh, as as much of a no bs person as you will imagine or meet and is completely authentic and I think that's a testament to you and how you've succeeded because just knowing you even in meetings with you, 
you're able to articulate where you stand quickly without offending someone, but very being, but still being direct and to the point. And I think that I share that same style and it's not as common as you think. So, mm-hmm. so when she, Suze, when she was like making like, it's not a big deal, it actually is a big deal. It is a big deal. I love that the word authenticity has continue to creep into these podcasts and because that truly is that is the what the root of no bs is it's Mm -hmm. authenticity yeah and it's just so much easier isn't it right right just being honest yeah saying you know communicate and communicating what's going on and sometimes it's bad news like with your employees but they appreciate that so much more if you're honest with them and and forthcoming and and sometimes that's much more difficult than you know trying to put up a smoke screen but It's it's so much more respected in the end. Yeah. So and that and I learned that from my parents. Mm-hmm. You know. So it is amazing how yeah. that impact in the early years because the things the trends in the show are the early years, the formative years, what you were taught values wise, the first couple jobs, and then the whole authenticity or the mm-hmm. things that keep coming back. But in addition to fireballs, Amy, guess what else was new today? Our loyal listeners will notice that Suzanne has a microphone. You can hear her. I do. This might be a good As thing. As she should. It might be a bad thing, too. <laughs> no, so She's under pressure because you've it's all... It's a good thing. They've all missed these quips that she's had every week. Because I'm week she's, so funny. And then this week she decides Can to I not make any quite. I think the next podcast liners. should be one-on-one with you two. <laughs> we've done that already we've done twice. Oh, oh, we've so done missed it. specials. Sorry. We've done... We did oh, the yeah. David Bowie special. <laughs> we didn't do the Prince special. They wouldn't let me do the Prince special. We didn't. It wasn't that we didn't let you. We were super busy. Amy and Mike Gaddy nixed the Prince special. What people don't understand I is didn't. that the I mean, no, podcast Suzanne and Mike is Gaddy. part of. It's like a part of a very busy business that sure. we have to make Absolutely. time to do no, this. And, and I understand that. So I will tell you. So I fought Dave for how long? Six months at yes. this point. So I'm here today doing this. But and isn't it I am, fun? It. I mean, it really has not been that difficult. See. So everybody out there who's considering it, just come in and do it. Yeah. It's really not a big deal. It's therapeutic. It's yeah. fun, isn't it? It is. It's, it's so... I fought it because I just felt like it would take a lot of prep time, but it's really mm-hmm. just telling your story. Yeah. It's I not told her that it's about a, a five-minute yeah. prep time. Yeah. And then five minutes with me before we turn the mics on. Yeah. And yeah. Dave guides you through the rest. Yeah. It's just... Yeah, yeah, it's therapy. It's business therapy. Yeah. So not, but but I understand that because that's where I came in from. This standpoint is I've got so much going on at work. I've got so much going on in my personal life. I don't have time to take this hour to do this. But it's really not a big deal. I was already here. So as soon as we got the fireballs involved, you it was all up. good. She was in. <laughs> well, Amy, it's time to keep calm and hit the bullseye. I'm I'll- glad Amy's here. I'm so glad Amy's here. <laughs> I'll ask you to choose between two marketing or messaging classics. You tell me which one you like more and why, but you only have a few seconds to choose and hit the bullseye. Okay. You ready? Yep. You sure? Of course. Geico's gecko or the Aflac duck? Gecko. Why? (laughs) Because I love some of his lines. He just has some great lines. I, I can't. So you're putting me on the spot. No, no, no. You didn't prep me for this. that's, that's, That's good. So we'll move right into speaking of great lines. Because Suzanne, Amy, big music lover, <gasps> so I'm going to hit on two generations in the bullseye, two different bullseyes tied to her favorite type of music, Biggie or Tupac? Oh, definitely Biggie. Why? I'm just much more into Biggie, Big Papa. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just, I mean, I like Tupac, I love rap, but at Biggie, it's just much more my style, so... I was a Pac guy, although I like I like them both, yeah. but, I, but I'm more of a Pac guy. Yeah, and figures s- and so figures yeah, because he was talking <laughs> about something. He was trying to advocate change, I not know, just yeah. party and bullshit and what, what, party yeah. and bullshit. I'm more about partying. <laughs> I love them both, though. Uh, so since Amy is the uh, the uh, Energizer Bunny, she goes to concerts now and hangs out and. Parties and everything. So Drake or Future? Oh, so so you know Drake and Future are touring together. Why do you think I asked this? What do you think I'm not? So the, how, I don't why pre- do I have to pick? So you I'm, have to. I'm in the first you row. You have to choose. I'm in the first row at Drake Future. <sighs> she she also goes for, front. Yeah, I have my third so row. So Drake she by far. Down. Drake, I mean, Drake is just, I don't know. Well, first off, Drake is in love with me. So I have to tell you. Okay, he's in love with you. He is. So the last, I so I went to the Drake v. Lil Wayne concert. Uh, and there was like a connection. So 
I was a star when I left that concert. He had me on the big screen the whole night and told me he was in love with me. So I was a hero in my 16-year-old daughter at that point's eyes. And everybody at our high school was there. So I love Drake. He loves me. So He was awesome on that. So wait, tell me, week, tell me the this way. story. What did he say to you? That he loved her. He, so he was singing to me at one point in the concert. And, and I was with my daughter, and I said, I'm with my daughter. And he goes, I don't like your daughter. I like you. You're sexy. Ah! Wow, that's, that would, could scar your daughter for life. She loved it. No. That's proud. So I love Drake. So you took Drake. Yeah. All right, we'll go back in time a little bit. We'll leave the light on for you. Or pardon me, do you have any gray poupon? I guess, pardon me, do you have any gray poupon? Those were some great commercials, right? Mm-hmm. So the Tom... Tom, Tom Baudet is Baudet, what we'll leave the light on yeah. you, which was Motel 6, yeah. which was going... Yeah. Their niche was to tell you it's so cheap, you know, yeah. it's only Motel 6. Yeah, but I love the whole messaging of... Part, so th- they would pull up and, yes. you know, I love that. That was just fun. Yeah. Way the more fun. The window would roll down. Yeah. 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 American Express, don't leave home without it, or MasterCard, priceless. Oh, priceless, for sure. So all those moments that they came up with and then said priceless, that's just a lot of the stuff like what's life about? You know, you don't, sometimes you lose sight of, again, working in your day-to-day life and work takes over and you forget about what's truly important. And I think like those MasterCard commercials kind of brought you back to what's truly important. So That's Amy Veltri, CEO of NGE Environmental here on the No BS Show in the midst of Hit the Bullseye. She's a WVU grad, so we're putting her on the spot with the bullseye. Don Nealon or Gail Catlett? (laughs) Oh, God. Now, now before she answers... I don't even know who that is. One is one is the winningest football coach in West Virginia history. The other is the winningest basketball coach. Football by far. They were there at the same time. They were were there almost the exact same time. Nealon started in 79 and Catlett 80, I think. So, you know, Neilan's son-in-law is... Of course. Yeah. He's a Johnstown guy. Yeah. So, definitely football. I'm a football girl. Love, live for college football still to this day. She was so, referencing yeah. Haas. Jeff Haas, yep. went to school with Gerard Donahue and And married Neilan's daughter. And married yeah. Neilan's daughter. Oh. He, 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 after his junior year, he graduated and then stayed to get his master's and had like a 4.0. Yeah. He's very anti-Johnstown. He yeah. He's not like the rest of us. He's a success. <laughs> So I'm a very, I'm a huge college football fan. Live for college football. Can't wait for it to start again. I just so Neilan by far. So, and but you I root love for the Mountaineers. Oh, of oh, course. Yeah. Insane but about it. at this point, so I, I love Huggy Bear though. So at this point, that's if Bob you give, Huggins yeah. for you uh, non basketball fans. Huggy Bear is the man. Not not Starsky and Hutch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this episode, sights and sounds of marketing. Now look at this. You got. I'm, I'm. I am going to be cocky about this. This episode, sights and sounds of marketing, starts with the song "Juicy," oh, by Notorious B.I.G. from the year 1994. It was all a dream. <laughs> I used to read Word Up magazine, Salt and Pepper, and Heavy D up in the limousine, hanging pictures on my wall. When we're young, we look at the world and see so many possibilities. Each generation has its own movie, rock or sports stars they admire. Way back when I had the red and and black lumberjack with the hat to match. And for better or worse, each generation has its own memorable fashions, too. Bobby socks, bell bottoms, shoulder pads, camouflage pants, swatch watches, and so on. But we're all so passionate about things when we're young. Where does that enthusiasm go for so many people? Why do so many lose sight of their goals and what really motivates them? You know very well who you are. Don't let them hold you down. Reach for the stars. Maybe a bad experience with a lame teacher, coach, or boss hurt our self-esteem, or we lack the confidence to take a chance. We rationalize away our situation or find someone or something other than ourselves to blame. I made the change from a common thief to up close and personal with Robin Leach. Fortunately, most of us don't have to make such a momentous leap, yet far too often we find reason after reason to put off doing things we really want to do. We settle for the status quo. Living life without fear, putting five carrots in my baby girl's ears. Instead of fearfully thinking about all that could go wrong, focus on the possibilities Amy's cracking up. Start off, with, start off small with some quick hits to gain confidence, then build upon those with a plan to achieve the big picture goals you used to get excited about. She just stole my fireball. If you don't know, Pussy. now you know, Amy. What did she say? 
Good Lord. If you don't know, now you know, Veltri. The important thing is to set goals related to what drives you. Sure, negative thoughts still creep in for everyone. Fight them off as much as you can by focusing on what really matters. Damn right, I like the way the life. Damn right, I like the life I, like, <laughs> right, I, like the life I live because I went from negative. Okay, to wait. Positive. So I'm going to see Snoop Dogg and Wiz Khalifa too. So <gasps> no. She, she, see, I picked the sights and sounds for yeah. her. Damn right, I like the life I live because I went from negative S-E-S to positive. Yes, double beat. D O double G Y D O double G U C. She can rap, you can't. Sometimes you need to remember how you thought back in the day while trying to forget what you wore. And it's all good, baby, baby. Give me some more rap. Come on, give me, give me, uh, give me the, uh, give me some Dre and Snoop. Give me some Dre and Snoop. I just did. Nine five five plus four pennies. Yeah, there you go. (laughs) We can do, we can get that one together. It's the capital S E S, a fresh a double a P D O double G Y D O double G U C. That's impressive. There you go. <laughs> Nowadays, everyone, everybody want to talk like got something to say, but nothing comes out when they move their lips. Just a bunch of gibberish. The motherfuckers act as if they forgot about mass. <laughs> this, this is like a throwdown. You ready? <laughs> you got another one? Nope. And party and bullshit <laughs> and, and party, party and bullshit. <laughs> oh my God. Other sights and sounds from the year 1994 include... O.J. Simpson and the White Bronco. Wow. Really? Did you watch the O.J. show? I, I did yeah, not. I Suzanne not. watched it. My Suzanne, tell us. Did. I got a little obsessed with it. Yeah, tell, tell the story about how you got obsessed with it. I don't want to talk about it, but I just, I'm curious, because I, I, I'm doing Do like the whole Kardashians. Of no, just like big asses. No, the whole thing was like, like they reenacted the whole thing that we lived through. Right. Which but was yet, interesting. It, you knew what was going to happen, but yet you'd, Found yourself just like, I thought it was really good. Yeah. My par- my parents have been watching, which has surprised me. They're like, are you watching? I'm like, no. I don't have time for that, but very interesting. No, binge it sometime. Yeah. Like yeah. when you have time, just binge yeah. it. I, like I have time so where in were my you, retirement. Where were you when, you when you first heard about the murders? I don't remember. No, I don't remember I think that the one. Question is yeah. the Bronco Chase. Where right? Were, well, there's I do, three. I there are three questions. I vaguely remember and that was that was the whole thing that was on news. I vaguely remember that. So there are there are several points within our. So we're probably all within the same. Yep, yeah. Eighteen general. months. Suzanne's, right. Suzanne's the oldest. I'm the oldie okay. here. Okay. There's but, three things in the OJ. Trial. Right. So ahead. you think about the this the space explore that like the explosion mm-hmm. challenger. For, right. And I was in college at that point. I was walking through my dorm. I remember that. Right. So the OJ thing. What magic else? getting AIDS. I'm serious. That's, magic as a guy an, magic who announcing screws he's around magic, a lot. Magic you, you probably do, but Ma- magic announcing. That just he, does he not even. AIDS. Right. See my point exactly. That's not even on my radar. And then I can't. What else was in with within our? Well, there's three tied to OJ, which. You typically do remember definitely the Ford, you know, the chase. The Explorer the, thing. But you definitely, I definitely the, the second that, thing with OJ they? is when the actual announcement came out. When he was. When that he was found not guilty. Right. Where you were with that, the murder yeah. of that. And, is, and that whole thing. Fa- yeah. I do. Yeah. I remember that. The Rodney King riots. Yeah. Yeah. Magic's in top 10. I'm serious. It's unequivocal. It's not even debatable. It's, it's not, not even, even debatable. Magic, me. just because it's not for you two, I'm telling you, Magic Johnson's announcement. No, I'm telling yeah. you, Magic Johnson's announcement for our generation is in the top 10. Okay. For guys, it's in the top three. For everyone, it's in the top 10. Okay. And I'm telling you. Look it up. Go go Google something. Top okay. 10 moments of Generation X. Okay. It'll be in there. I'm not doing it now. Keep going, sights and sounds, man. All right. Well, here's one that could get in there. <laughs> this one could get in there. Tanya Harding takes out Nancy Kerrigan. <laughs> yes! That's a good one. Yeah. Yes. Oh, meow. Oh. <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah. That was, yeah. Wow. Nancy Carey was a lousy crier. She's, yeah. But that was, that was good TV. Yeah. That was really good TV. Segwaying right into the Wonder Bra was invented. Really? 91. 94. Don't need it. 94. Oh, I have my dates wrong. Oh, no, I don't. Oh. Zip, zap, zip, zap. So the Wonder Bra was invented. Whatever. <laughs> Keep uh, going. Um, Tom Hanks. My mama always said that life was like a box of chocolates. Oh. You never know what you're going to get. Forrest Gump movie. was 94. Yeah. Yes. It was wow. a great movie. Very Box good. Ball, a lot of historical events. 
Gen A. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. One of my all-time favorites. I watch it a part of it every time it's on that I when I zap through is Shawshank Redemption. Mm. <sighs> Andy Dufresne. Oh, Love that movie. I do too. Mm. A, a lot of life lessons learned from that movie, yes. right? Yes. Yes. And yeah. and even though they were in prison and had just so many th- again, so it goes back to who you are and what you're about and what you represent, like even if you're in prison, you still are that person at the at your core. So, Amy Valtry bringing it full circle. <laughs> you're been right. Amazing. She's, She's been amazing. Awesome guest. Incredible guest. We have to get, you know we have to do like Academy Awards at the end of the year. For... <laughs> We're going to. I'm gonna win. <laughs> She's gonna win most. Authentic. I will show up in the t-shirt. With... <laughs> Oh, Heels. there is a no BS t-shirt that she said she's going to show up in the no BS With t-shirt. only like red stiletto heels. And, that. and a wonder bra that was invented in she's 1994. Lobbying. She's lobbying for this award. She wants the award. I back. want them all. I want to sweep. Wants... Every category. Marmo wins for the, Mark Marmo wins for the only person to not Screw come in him. for the show. <laughs> He did it on his cell phone, and like when his hand got tired from holding it up, you'd lose his voice. You'd hear this, get this or that. <laughs> we have to get Marmo back. Marmo's a mutual friend of Amy's and mine, and Suze's as well. Mm-hmm. The No BS Marketing Podcast with Dave Mastovich is brought to you by Mass Solutions. Put our three-step No BS process to work for you. Visit MassSolutions.biz today to take your marketing to another level. It's all about bold solutions, No BS. So, Amy, how can listeners contact you if they'd like to learn more about what you do and how Please much don't. of how much of <laughs> you talk? So, or send them to your website. Yeah. So, www.ngeconsulting.com. You had a little stumble there. <laughs> I'm so, impressed. She's done like three <laughs> shots. I'm stumbling with one. <laughs> She's done like three. So yeah, I took. So by the way, I took Dave's full glass of Fireball, and he outweighs me by like three times. So I don't know about three times. Come on, I'm 102 pounds. So I'm 306. <laughs> Good three lord. Three times? You're not 306. No, that's pounds, what I'm saying. She's <laughs> insulting me. I'm barely <laughs> twice. Okay, Jeez. by double. But anyway, yeah. So generally, we don't like to deal with the general public, but. So again, as I talked about during our marketing piece, we are very specialized from a services standpoint. But yeah, we can be. There is a link through our our website that if you want to contact us, you can. So, Amy, any, any last words of wisdom for our listeners? Nope. <laughs> Thanks for being on the show. <laughs> for our listeners, remember the show is brought to you by Audible. You can get a free trial. For your audio, audible books at audibletrial.com slash no BS. Thanks for joining us for the No BS Marketing Show. Visit boldsolutionsnobs.com for show notes plus additional marketing and messaging resources. Are you signed up for light reading? You'll receive valuable strategies every other week to improve your marketing and transform your message. If you're not signed up and you're a guest, your shirt gets revoked. So, Amy, we have to find out if you're signed up. It really is light, intended to be read in two minutes or less, and it just might trigger bright ideas for you. To sign up, Amy, visit MassSolutions.biz. Remember, ask yourself, what's the big idea? What's the big idea? And build your story around the answer. It's all about bold solutions.